Well, hi everyone and welcome to Community Journal. We're very happy that you've joined us and uh, here we are almost to the end of May. I can't believe it. I can't either. My goodness, next week and it's June. That's right, it Whoa. is. And, uh, Where did May go? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. And of course, it's getting busier and busier here on the Cape. Oh yeah. And as I do every year, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a minute here. Uh-oh. <laughs> If you are on the bike trail, and more and more people are using the bike trail, if you notice when you come to an intersection, there is a big stop sign. It is there for a purpose. You are supposed to stop and walk your bike across the intersection. There have been so many close calls, and we just don't want any tragic accidents here on the Cape. So please adhere to those signs, and uh, we know that uh, it'll make it better for every one of us. And, just the other day, I came close to hitting somebody, oh, which is horrible. I know. They got off their bike, then they got back on, and then they started up again. That, that's right. So, well, anyway. Anyway. Uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Good. As you can see, we have, <laughs> a, we have a guest. <laughs> we have a guest with us today. Um, we'd like to introduce to you Erica Strespeck. She is from the Cultural Center. And Erica was telling us before we went on the air that this is the third year the Cultural Center has been open. It was our third January, just this past January. So wow. we're... You know, we're really moving along over there. Everything's full. We have our wait list. Um, Isn't that wonderful? That is absolutely wonderful. If you haven't had a chance to come over or come to any of the events, uh, we have a lot going on. We'll go over some of the ones we've got coming up in the next few weeks. But um, we've got a lot happening over there. It's exciting. Wow. Good. Well, tell us some of the things that are happening. So as we're <laughs> heading into June, which we were just saying, yes. how <laughs> I can't believe it's almost June, but... Um, Right now, going on through June 7th, the Guild of Harwich Artists is celebrating their 40th anniversary here in the community. Wow. Oh so, 40 years for that nonprofit celebrating art in the community. They have a membership show happening in the former library space right now. So, that uh, the public is welcome to come in if they see the open flag, or Fridays is usually a good day to come pop in in the morning. Um, so that will be up and available to view until the 7th. So wow, some really nice. great work. Um, a lot of artists participated this year, so it was a really wonderful show to see. Wow. wow. Well, we'll have to put that on our calendar. Yes, that's yes. right. So that ends on uh, June 7th. And then kicking off right in the beginning of June. So June 1st, uh, we have World Oceans Day. We did celebrate World Oceans Day last year. But it's globally, it's, it's celebrating our waters, one world, one ocean, globally. So um, wow. Judith Underwood heads up the Blue <laughs> Institute at Cape Cod Bay. She's a nonprofit in our, in our, in our building. Um, she is, um, you might remember some of this from Art Week. We had some writers events during yes. Art Week, yes. Words yes. on Water. Yes. So this will be sort of the, 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 the presentation of all that hard work. Oh. Um, so it'll be Words on Water, an evening of prize-winning poetry, pro prose, and plays. Wow. That will be happening June 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. Tickets are adults $10, $5 for seniors and students, and children under 13 are free. So that will be in the auditorium. And then before that, she has a pre-event reception from 5 to 6 45 in the um, in the room in the oh, library room. So actually, that would be nice. a great opportunity to see that artwork as well. Right. So yeah, right. um, so that's exciting. Events uh, tickets <clears throat> are on Eventbrite. More information on our Facebook page if um, anyone's interested in that. And Judith still has a call for submissions going on. So if you're still interested in sending um, in artwork, prose or or plays, um, there's still time until May 29th to submit that. So and how would they be submitted? Do they have, is there an address to send? There is an address. You can uh, get more information at blueinstitute.org or we'll have some information on our Facebook page and eventually it'll be on our website to our department site on the town of Harwich under the Harwich Cultural Center Department. So they have to get those in by May 29th Correct. so they don't have a lot of time. Not a lot of time. And there's right. a mailing address there too, Correct. right? Correct. Yes. So the Blue Institute at Cape Cod Bay um, Post Office Box 333, Harwich Port, Mass, 02646. So, Great. very exciting. Le we also have, um, we have a, a um, CD release party um, happening on, uh, 
Goodness. No, oh, that's, that's okay. all right. Don't so worry many, about so it. many things. You've got so, so many, many things to do. I, so, I don't know how so, you keep track um, of what you're doing. Alicia Matthewson, she's a local singer songwriter. Her CD is coming out, 12 Rebirth. So she's having a CD release party on June 1st. Oh, oh okay. So that's nice. at the Cultural Center. That? that is at 7 o'clock. Okay. And the information on that is on our website. And also on the first is Discovery Through the Self Portrait with um, two of our newest artists in the building, um, Taylor Fox and Laura Balboni, and they're collaborating with um, Lorinda Raquel. Mm -hmm. So there'll be uh, meditation, sound bath, and then they'll be discovering themselves and, and thinking about how they'd like to create their portrait. So oh. there's several sessions available through the year, but the first one kicks off on the first. And Bernadette Waystack um, And Bernadette Waystack. She, yeah. um, she has a new studio in our, in our space, um, and she has jumped right in with free first Thursdays of the month art salons. So that's mm. free and open to the public. You're welcome to bring your art projects. She'll have limited available materials, um, but you're encouraged to bring your own chat and talk, and it'll be open um, and working on projects. She does set up a small still life. So this will be our last one for June. We'll take July and August off, and then they'll start again in September. Ah, I see. So, okay. And what time is Bernadette? That is at back? six o'clock. At six o'clock. Yes. Very good. And it lasts about about an hour and a half, an two hour hours or yes, so. I, I suppose okay. it depends on how how in depth people kind of get in their into their work. So very good. Very good. Wow. So a lot of free uh, fun things happening over there at the center, as well as uh, events that people can join in and participate. So. Well, wow. you know, I don't think anybody can get over how well uh, that center has taken off. Yes. I mean, it is just wonderful to go in there and see so many uh, artisans doing all different types of uh, art, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, you guys are to be really uh, complimented. You're doing a great sure, job. Sure, thank you. Um, again, we have not just artists, too. You know, we've got some craftspeople and tradespeople. And again, the Cape Cod makers, they have a uh, tremendous studio. They always have a free open house on um, the last uh, Saturday of the month. So those are always at 6 o'clock. Um, those are exciting, and those are mm -hmm. robotics, laser die cut printing, and things <coughs> like that. So, mm -hmm. a lot happening over there. It's it's great and it's to all see. It's on it. your website. Yes. yes, the website is growing with the help of um, some great people here in town, getting that up and running. So, wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so Thanks much for, for having me this by. morning. Thank yes. you. Yes, we really nice appreciate you. you joining us, yes. uh, Erica, and. Uh, you know, good luck on all of these events. It's um, just great that you, you guys have them there. That's sure, wonderful. Sure, thank you so much. Okay, very good. We all appreciate right. that. Well, now we're going to turn to uh, what's going on at the library. As you know, it is always busy there. So let's take a look at what's going on at the Brooks Free Library. My name is Jennifer Pickett. Um, I'm the reference librarian at the Brooks Free Library, and I'm here with Carla Burke, who is the coordinator of the VITAL program at the Brooks Free Library. VITAL stands for Vision Impaired Technical Assistance at the Library. VITAL. There's the red light. No, there it is. <laughs> um, we are here to tell you about a new program that we're offering today um, that's going to be at the, here at the community center. Uh, the first date for the new program is June 4th, 9.30 to 10. Um, it's going to be the first Tuesday of the month here at the Community Center in conjunction with the COA. Um, and it's going to be called Living with Vision Loss. And it's something new, and we're still working on exactly what it's going to be. We're looking for feedback. We're here to tell you about a few of our ideas. We'd like to get some ideas from all of you if you have uh, specific things that we'd like to show you. But we, we have a great vital program at the library that Carl has been running for a number of years now. We have a lot of services that we offer there um, for people with, with vision impairment and also their relatives and friends that might be helping them. We have a lot of devices that we're going to be showing you and talking about. And we think this program at the COA is going to be a little bit of outreach where we're going to be showing you some of those devices where you can learn about things um, if you're dealing with vision loss or you, somebody you love is dealing with vision loss. And there's also appointments that you can make to have a, a more in-depth discussion and technology training at the library. So for the most part, I'm going to be turning it over to Carla, and she's going to be talking to you about a few of the devices and assistive technology and 
we'll demonstrate a couple of things and show you just some of the things that we can we can do and we'll be showing you. This is Carla. All right, thank you, Jen. Um, so the idea for this is we wanted to be able to show people some devices that are available, um, some adapted techniques that people can use to perform uh, tasks in, in their daily life. Um, so for example, reading, that seems to be the number one um, issue with people when they lose their vision. How can I access books? How can I uh, read the newspaper or magazines? How can I read my mail? Um, those types of things. So we do have some devices uh, available at the library and also some portable devices. Um, the most popular one, and we will be providing instruction on this during our um, monthly programs here at the community center, uh, is the uh, National Library Service Digital Player. I don't know how many people have heard of Perkins Library, but that Perkins Library in Watertown is the network library for the federal program, National Library Service, and that provides books and magazines free to people, U.S. residents, um, who have a print impairment, a print disability. And Jen can sort of show you um, the player that you get um, on permanent loan for free. It's a totally free program. And what's called a talking book, which is um, a book is on a digital cartridge that fits right into the player. And we can sign people up for this program. It's just a simple application that um, we help you uh, fill out. And um, again, magazines and books, they also offer a downloadable service that our vital volunteers will help uh, patrons who don't have access to a computer. They can download um, books for people and um, put them onto one of these cartridges and people can check them out at our library. It's a fantastic service. There are other services available uh, for people with vision loss to um, get books, uh, magazines, newspapers, NFB Newsline is a great free service and we can tell people, demonstrate how to use that, either on um, an iPhone, which I have here, uh, on the web or just by using your touchtone telephone. So we'll be demonstrating things like that. Um, also, there are special apps or, or devices that will actually read uh, print now. Uh, your mail, if you wanted to read your mail, um, they, there's even a wonderful new app uh, that will read handwriting, which is the first of its kind. So that's really exciting. It's, in terms of writing, we have um, Writing guides, I, I know we, we have some 2020 and, and a signature guide, but there are check writing guides. There's special paper that has uh, bold lot black lines to, to follow along, uh, envelope writing guides, all sorts of things we're going to be showing. Uh, note taking is a, a question I get all the time. How can I just take a quick note, jot something down? And there are devices such as the Wilson Digital Recorder, very simple with three buttons. Uh, there's uh, the Victor Reader Stream that does a whole lot more than just take notes, but it's very simple to use for a note taker. Um, and I, there's obviously apps and things like that. We'll be showing you all different ways that you can take uh, quick notes or more in-depth notes. Um, labeling, I get asked this a lot of time. Uh, how can I label items so I can identify them and know? So we actually have a couple of devices. One we've brought with us called the Pen Friend. It's just a simple, they say it's a, a pen, looks like a pen, I think it looks more like a carrot. <laughs> but um, it, you just have these stick-on labels and, and you can um, record a message, you or someone you know can record a message on the label and then just hold the tip of the pen up to it and it will read it back to you. So that's one way. And of course, there's also, um, I think I put out some tactile markers. Some There's all different kinds, different sizes, different shapes that actually stick on to things, and you can mark things with that. I happen to use some very simple things like an elastic or a paper clip. And so we're going to talk about different techniques, different ways to mark things. Um, let's see, we also have another, um, how do you keep appointments? How do I keep track of the, of the days, a calendar? So there are large print calendars, really large. They come in different sizes. This is actually, I think, one of the largest ones. 
Um, there are Braille calendars if somebody uses Braille. Um, there are also are calendars on the iDevices, the iPad, um, you know, some of these smart devices, your smartphones, and we teach people how to use those as well. So there's no reason why you can't keep track of appointments or uh, special dates, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and the like. They're all, and this is just a sampling. There are actually other kinds of devices, too, that we'll be showing in order to do, um, keep a calendar. Um, cooking, um, dressing, laundry, um, cleaning, house cleaning, oh my gosh, there's so much out there that, that you can use to help you perform those tasks. Um, and certainly a lot of techniques, too, that um, I use myself and that I can share that I know others use as well. Um, I did bring a couple of things to do with cooking. The most intriguing one that I want Jen to show is if you've ever tried to fry an egg or make a pancake um, with your, without sight, um, it is a little bit tricky. So they have this ring available that you just put in the pan and you pour the egg into it or the pancake batter and it actually keeps the, um, the food molded to that shape. So you can just stick the spatula underneath it and um, either take the ring off and flip it or just if you don't fl flip your eggs, what's that called, sunny side up? Mm -hmm. um, you can just take the ring off and, and take the egg out of the pan. So uh, li liquid level indicator, if you're pouring um, liquid like milk or water or coffee, uh, there's these uh, li liquid level indicators that actually hang over the edge of the cup and when the liquid reaches the prongs, it, it gives off a, a buzzer, which is pretty startling. They also make them now um, that play music, which I think I'll get one of those in instead of this buzzer. Um, and in terms of a technique, I, I don't know if I want to admit this, but when I'm pouring for myself and not for company, I just stick my finger over the edge of the inside of the glass and I can feel <laughs> if it's cold if it's a cold beverage. So there's all those types of um, techniques and devices that we're going to, each week we will have some devices available, talk about some techniques. We will have, um, although each month that we offer this, the first Tuesday of the month, we'll also concentrate, take some of that time to concentrate on one type of task, whether it be labeling items or, um, it, you know, color indicators, how do you tell what color clothes you have on, that type thing. So we'll focus in on some ideas, some tasks, and of course we want uh, input from, from you as well. A um, couple more things, we have, um, we will be getting a smart speaker. I don't know if you've heard of the Amazon Echo, the um, Google Home, uh, Apple has one as well. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to be, thanks to a very generous donation from a patron, we will be purchasing an Amazon Echo and showing people all the things that they can do with the Echo. Um, you've probably heard of Alexa. She, there's so much that Alexa can help you with, and so we'll just be talking about smart speakers as well. And of course, all this will be available at the library um, too. One last thing I just want to mention is we are hoping to be able to purchase soon um, some adapted board games and card games. Um, Monopoly, Scrabble, uh, Left, Right, Center, Bingo, all sorts of games. Cribbage boards, an adapted cribbage board for people who are blind or who have uh, low vision. And we will be demonstrating those, making them available at the library, actually offering some programs for people with vision loss as well as with their sighted friends or peers um, to come to our library to have a, a sort of a game, a game hour or, or whatever, mm -hmm. but that's in the works. Um, so I think, did I cover just about everything You've that's on the table? You've got the talking calculator. Oh yes, here. yep, so again, you know, you can obviously use a smart device to uh, perform mathematical um, uh, tasks, but you can also use something like this, which I use, uh, keep at my desk, it's a talking calculator. So there are a lot of devices. If you 
Think of something that you want to know how to do. You're, having, you're struggling with a task because of your vision loss or your spouse or parent or someone you know is. Give me a call at the library. We'll put that on our um, list of things to cover during our monthly um, program here. And also remember that uh, we do offer more individualized instruction. We can schedule that if you happen to come and see something at the library, at the program here or at the library that you want to learn how to do. Um, we will have some hands-on time during the, the uh, sessions that we have here at the COA, um, but more in-depth instruction will take place at the library. And one last thing I remember, I know I brought, I picked up a stack of some handouts and brochures and catalogs that we keep at the library. We have a whole resource area filled with shelves of information for people with vision loss or for their family or friends. Or if it's just somebody who is interested in learning how people with vision loss do, you know, perform different tasks, you're certainly welcome to come. And um, if you're looking for something in particular and you don't know where to find it, then certainly give me a call at the library and we will make uh, that resource information available um, to you as well. And everything that we demonstrate during that half hour each month, we will also have information about how you can um, either get it for free if it's a free um, um, device or get it uh, an organization you might be eligible for, such as the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind or the Veterans Administration, or um, we even have information on loan programs where you can um, get some help financially to purchase some of this uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might be Let me Let me just throw in one, one device that we forgot. Okay. Um, this is a Ruby handheld magnifier. Oh, yes. This is a really neat device. I, I like these things. They're very fun to play with. It's kind of like a mag, uh, your magnifying glass on steroids. It works a thousand times better than a regular magnifying glass. And I just wanted to mention we have a lot of options for basic magnification of print. Um, we just got a new Optilac yep. Clearview Clear. Yeah. Video magnifier, video with, magnifier speech. with speech, yeah. which is a pretty neat device. Um, yeah. So even if you're, you know, you have cataracts or glaucoma, you're not, you don't have to be legally blind to qualify for any of these, these services. If it's difficult for you to read, you probably do qualify for some of these. But there's lots of options out there. So if mm -hmm. you're just starting to run into issues with seeing things, and it doesn't have to be reading, it could be at home, you know, reading medication labels or, you know, directions on how to cook something. There's lots of magnification options, so I just wanted to mention that as well. That's we, true. Yeah. yeah, so we will be covering magnification options, audio, speech options, uh, touch lightly on Braille. Um, we do uh, have some, some things that are available in Braille for people who use Braille. Now, I also teach Braille at the library if people are interested. Um, but definitely, you know, people with vision loss access print um, and perform tasks, you know, either through magnification, uh, Braille, or um, an audio um, outlet, or obviously by touch if they're, if they're touching labels or, you know, uh, raised markers or things like that. So we'll, we'll cover it all. We want your input, and uh, we hope to see you on the first Friday, uh, excuse me, the first Tuesday of each month beginning June 4th from 9.30 to 10. We may, it may go over a little bit, I don't know. Um, and it's, it we'll start here in room five at the community center. If you have any questions, um, there's no pre-registration, you, you can just come. Uh, but if you have any questions or suggestions, Give me a call at the library. The number there is 508-430-7562. I'm at extension 5, and I work on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I do have voicemail. So if I'm not at my desk, please leave a message with your name and phone number, and I'll get back to you. Um, you can also email me at cburke at clamsnet.org. That's C. B U R K E at clamsnet, C L A M S N E T.
www.ohio.org. And if you can't remember all that, just call the library and ask, and they'll help you um, refer, refer you to me. Mm -hmm. So so we're definitely going to have the first Tuesday in June, July, and August. Yep. And I think we'll assess you know, the date and the time and see how that works and see how we might change the program or not as we go forward. It, this is all new to us, so we want to hear from you, what, what works best from you. But we would love to see people just drop by when you're here to come in to talk to us and let us know, you know what you're looking for. Exactly. In assistive technology. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was really very informative by Carla yes. and Jennifer. I'm glad they got together yes. to bring us up to date at the library. You know, all of the uh, devices that are available for sight-limited people, it's just wonderful. I know, and it was so nice of them to take the time and explain what's available. Yeah, no, yeah. really. That, you uh, need it? Yeah, that's really wonderful, and we thank them very, very much uh, for doing that. I have a very interesting uh, brochure here from the Harwich Conservation Trust. And, um, you know, some people really don't know um, what the trust does and all of the things they're involved in. And this is really a very informative um, uh, brochure, a booklet, actually. And uh, you can uh, get these if you are a member of the Harwich Conservation Trust. Uh, you can give them a call, and, uh, you, you know, they might be uh, nice enough to send you one. You can call them at 508-432-3997. That's 508-432-3997, because I know they like to get the word out as to really all of the things that they're involved in, and it's amazing uh, what they've done here in town. And I, I, it is amazing. You're absolutely right. And I think you can pick that up at their office as well. You can go to yes. their office and get yeah. one. Yes, you can. So uh, uh, you should get one. Uh, what do you have there, Eileen? Speaking oh, of plants. I have uh, lots and lots. Plants. Memorial Day is coming up yep. with all that goes with it. We have a lot going on around town, so get out your pencil and your paper, because <laughs> here we go. On Saturday, that's two days from now, Saturday, May 25th, from 9 to 12, rain or shine, the Harwich Garden Club is going to be holding their annual plant sale. Harwich by the Sea is the theme, and there you will find perennials, annuals, hanging baskets, shrubs, garden gifts, the bake sale, which is very, very popular, drawing, and much more. And there's a lot of things um, up for the drawing this year, uh, so you can buy tickets and put them in uh, the, the basket that goes with each prize, and that's, that's a lot of fun, too. Um, this is all being held at Dome Park, right in Harwichport, across from the Post Office Square. There will be a master gardener available to answer your questions, and as you probably already know, the Garden Club is a nonprofit organization dedicated to beautifying Harwich, and please consider making a donation to the Garden Club. You can certainly do that by attending this sale. Very good. Yes. And um, again, I think we mentioned this last week, but it's uh, all too important. We want to do it again. Yes. Uh, there is a blood drive coming up, and uh, of course, this see this time of year, uh, I was amazed to see how many more people are on the Cape during the summer season. Oh, I know. And um, the blood like drive. Somebody rang a bell, and they all came. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You're right. <laughs> Uh, but the Community Blood Drive is sponsored by Wingate at Harwich at the Community Room at 111 Headwaters Drive in Harwich, Mass. And it's going to take place on Friday, uh, May 31st, uh, from 12 to 5. Uh, that's Friday, May 31st, from 12 to 5. And uh, if you are at all able to give blood, it is really so important to do so. And uh, you can call for more information, one 800 Red Cross. That's 1 800 Red Cross. And for anyone that does give blood, you get a $5 Amazon gift card. So, mm -hmm. I think from May 1st to June 12th. Uh, uh, June yeah, 10th. Com yes. yeah, come in from May 1st mm -hmm. to June 10th. So, the, the actual blood drive uh, coming up is the 31st. So, right. Uh, so, go there and. <laughs> And give blood if you can. That's right. Okay. What else do you have, Eileen? Well, I have a couple of things happening on Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. Uh, I just told you about the plant sale on Saturday. Um, on Sunday, the Mid Cape Chorus is going to be presenting Songs of Dreams and Whimsy. It's a concert to benefit the Family Pantry and the Mid Cape Chorus. It's being held Sunday, May 26th at 5 p.m. at the Pilgrim Congregational Church, at Route 28 in Harwichport. The general admission is $20, and tickets may be purchased from chorus members or by calling 508-430-7136 
four at the door, and we can assure you that it's going to be a good concert. We're in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're two of 90, so. <laughs> I, I don't believe you said that. <laughs> Well, we had our dress rehearsal last week, and it went very well. Yeah, it's really, it's yes. a 90-voice chorus, and 90 voices really in four oh, parts, sometimes yeah. five. Um, and I think they're going to have accompaniment, uh, not only piano, but uh, uh, string bass mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, percussion. And it's going to really sound great, yeah. especially at the church. Uh, yes, the acoustics great in acoustics. there are great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very. And there's four sets of different types of music, including patriotic music. Something for everybody. There you go. There you go. Um, this is one that uh, I believe we did this last year. This was a pre planning yes. seminar. Yes, we did. It's actually a luncheon that's going to take place on Monday, June 10th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And um, the lunch is actually from 12 to 1. Uh, the program highlights, this is a, you know, nobody wants to uh, get involved usually, but you have to think about this. It Are happens your, to us all at some happens point. Happens <laughs> to us all. Are your affairs in order is their catch line here. And um, the folks that are going to be there, all kinds of information. Uh, Robin Kelly, our Town of Harwich Cemetery Administrator. Emily Mitchell, uh, the Town of Harwich Council on Aging uh, Director. Uh, Angela Angelini for Senior Housing. Jamie Nunes and Patty uh, Coville, Hospice 101. But okay. that's, that's really important. Yeah, it is. Um, Kristen Callahan, Flower Angels USA, and Julie Brooks, How to Declutter Your House Now so your kids don't have to do it later. Our kids would like us to attend that one. <laughs> <laughs> would they ever? Um, and many more, it says. I mean, each speaker will talk for about 10 or 15 minutes, and um, vendor tables will be set up around the room for private question and answer, answer sessions. So this is a very, very uh, uh, robust uh, uh, luncheon here, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a good idea. Uh, if you haven't attend, attended one of these, you really should. Monday, June 10th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and I believe it's right here at the community center. So, and, and you need to sign up. Yeah, you must sign up at the Council on Aging. Thanks for spotting that, Eileen. There's a lot on this. So. Um, and space is limited, and you can RSVP by calling 508-430-7550. So that's a good one. Yes, it is. And now I have one from the Harwich United Methodist Church at One Church Street, Harwich. Uh, their new service time on Sundays will be 9 a.m. So for contact information, the phone number is 508-432-3734. And that's from Carl Young. Very good. Yes. Now we're going to uh, switch gears a little bit uh, and get the latest from the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, one of the things they're going to be talking about, there has been a big change in uh, one of the uh, landmarks down in Harwichport. And uh, they are going to talk about that. So uh, let's take a look at the latest Chamber update. about for the first time this spring doing the chamber update. I'm here with Cindy Williams and we're actually, as you can probably see, in Murphy's General Store. We are so excited to be here. Uh, I gather the store opened a couple of weeks ago, is that right? The store opened a couple weeks ago and we did a ribbon cutting this past uh, weekend with a great group of people here coming in and buying and just seeing all the great work that um, Heather and Jay did, the owners of Murphy's General Store. And just thank you guys for letting us be here today because I just wanted to show as we open up for the season um, this weekend um, with Memorial Day, the newest addition to um, our family in Harwich. And it's just been a great addition, great to see um, the transformation from Monahan's to um, where we are today. It looks so 
great. I, I was so excited when I walked in here. It really gives a feeling of ambiance of a general store, and I think it's going to be a real happening place. I think so, too. And yeah. it's what's so cool about it, each room has a different theme to it. You know, you start off when you walk in, there's some seasonal things. There's um, soaps and goodies for, you know, risotto sauces maple vinegar there's so many things i wanted to try and then i came in yeah. for our ribbon cutting and uh, jay said to me don't get the cinnamon toast popcorn so what did i do i got the cinnamon toast popcorn <laughs> and then yesterday morning it's addictive it's addictive oh, I see. but i thought all right i was making my coffee and i grabbed a handful the other morning and i said well it says cinnamon toast on it so why not <laughs> right? right but there's so many food. fantastic yeah. things mm -hmm. in here i love one thing well, um, as I was walking over, I was uh, saying to someone, they even have vinyl records here. Yes, I noticed Everything that. from Stray Cats yep. to Aretha. They have the Aretha Now album. I know. Which is very cool. But the thing that really struck me, I think, is the smell. There's something so delicious about the way this place smells, and that, that is so important to me, and I think it's important to a lot of people. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's delightful. A it's a cool it's place a for sure. It's and... Uh, a smell to behold. Absolutely. So I hope lots of people will come. Absolutely. Um, and after our update, I'm going to have uh, Heather and Jay join me for a few minutes just to kind of introduce them to everyone, too. Great. So we'll get more with them. But okay. as we know, it's Memorial Day weekend coming up. So that means the Harwich Chamber hours now are officially seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So um, for you everyone love that. this time of year, don't I, you? I love all year round, but yeah. this is fun because now we see all the regulars coming, you know, our second homeowners that come in and get mm -hmm. beach stickers, which will be going on sale June 10th. Um, and we do them seven days a week at the chamber, but our hours will kick in um, Friday. We are nine to five, Monday through Friday, Saturdays 10 to four, and then Sunday, oh, excuse me, nine to four on Saturday, mm -hmm. 10 to two on Sunday. So we're excited. Those um, are very accommodating hours. They are, and um, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, so uh, yeah. super excited for that. Terrific, and, uh, and I think that means it's almost beach weather. It is, and, and that means, that means beach, beach stickers, stickers right? <laughs> which is always fun. So yes, beach stickers will go on sale uh, June 10th, seven, di say seven days a week at the Chamber through Labor Day. So mm -hmm. um, we will be uh, starting that um, and going through all of the new things that have happened over the winter. A lot of work's been done um, in town on different committees. Um, we had a parking committee hmm. that, you know, we listened to what the town was looking for, what the residents were looking for, and the businesses. And um, so we came up with, um, there was an ad hoc uh, parking committee, which I had the pleasure of being on, and will run now through until 2020 next year. But um, people will notice the signs that we now have. Um, and, you know, a couple of the businesses said, we really need that universal P sign. Mm -hmm. So we got the universal uh, mm -hmm. P sign parking for sign. Um, parkings. Mm -hmm. And we have that both at the Route 28 side. So if you're coming from Dennis or Chatham, you can see that there's public parking for you. That you know, be, yeah, that'll be very helpful. Well, it's so important because there's so many great stores, galleries, and restaurants that when they came into town, part of what they have to do to be a business is come up with a site plan. And you have to provide parking if you don't have it um, at your location. Mm. So, it, you know, there's a lot of things that go into the planning of that. And, you know, if you're within 300 feet of the municipal lot, that can be considered on your site plan, your parking. So we had to, you know, the committee did a lot of work on this and heard some great um, feedback from people. So the plan will be for this summer, because we do need to try something. We've become so popular that, um, There'll be public parking um, in the main lot, no beach parking, but we have 21 beaches and ponds. So we can mm -hmm. certainly help you when you come in for your beach sticker, tell you where you can go, what some of the early times you maybe want to go down to, you know, some of the beaches that people love, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more than others. But also what we've done is moved the employee parking to the side lot that we have. Um, that's a kind of an annex um, over by TD Bank. So. That will be signed um, in the next week or so for employee parking. So for that all will the help employees in the neighborhood. Exactly, that don't have parking for themselves at um, mm -hmm. their business. So that's been a big um, help, and you know it's a work in progress. Yes. But um, mm -hmm. certainly it is something proactive to do it that is. the committee it came up like with. It'll be very helpful. So we're excited yeah. about Good. that. But there is, there's so much happening. Um, so many great things and right. great anniversaries. Isn't there a big anniversary. There's it's a really huge anniversary. anniversary. Right? Brooks, Brooks Academy. Academy. Yeah, 175 years. Wow. 
So they're going to have a birthday celebration on June 16th. Um, the museum and barn will be opening. The new exhibits this year are, um, I'm cheating on my notes, and I was going to try not to, but Harwich goes to school, and then the houses of Captain's Row. Hmm. As everyone knows, we have seven villages of Harwich, and West Harwich is the location of Captain's Row. So that's going to be a great um, exhibit for everyone, too. There's, there's so many wonderful jewels throughout our town. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Harwichport is, yes, the hub, so to speak, of the town, but Harwich Center has so much. West Harwich, East Harwich, you know, north and south. Each w village mm -hmm. has something mm -hmm. special. So excited well, to these see. These exhibits will be highlighting a lot of Absolutely. Yeah. So excited That's to great. see those exhibits. And um, the birthday celebration is on the 16th of June, 2 to 4. There's going to be a birthday cake and all kinds of great things. So I hope everyone will come out and uh, we'll be there um, and enjoy uh, the mm -hmm. celebration of that because it is. It's 175 years. The cool thing that they uncovered this winter, as everyone was uncovering things all winter, mm -hmm. um, a blackboard that used to uh, be yeah. at the school. Yeah, an actual school blackboard. So yeah. they put it under plexiglass. So it's going to be really exciting for everyone that visits the exhibits to see that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then also um, right in the grove up by the museum is the farmer's market. June 6th, get your fresh veggies mm -hmm. and goodies. Yep. Um, so that's that for June up there, and then kicking off our 10th anniversary road race. Ten years. Ten wow. years. So okay. we're super excited for that because that's our charitable foundation's way to give back to the Harwich mm -hmm. youth mm -hmm. um, through scholarships and grants for Little League and all kinds of great things. So registration is live on our website as well as um, registration forms in the visitor center it's a really fun event and a fundraiser it, it so is it's, it's a great it's way an excellent way to kick off yeah the we're summer. super excited for this yeah. year mm -hmm. um, and then as you said summer that means port summer nights oh, yeah. and that kicks yeah. off Ju July 3rd mm -hmm. so the Wednesday right before the 4th of July excited to see everyone there um, and people uh, can visit all the shops, including this beautiful store. Exactly, yeah. um, the galleries and everything. So the Guild of Harwich Artists is another one that will be open, but they celebrated 40 years this year as well. Yes. So there's That's just right. a lot, a lot happening um, in Harwich. So as certainly, always. we're uh, happy to always share that with everyone. But I would love it if we could just have Heather and Jay come in for a quick mm -hmm. second. Just say hi so everyone can yeah. see who the, our new owners are of Harwich, um, Port's Murphy's General Store. Hi, Cindy from the Harwich Chamber. And I am here with the newest owners, Jay and Heather, at Murphy's General Store in Harwich Port. We opened a couple weeks ago here, but did our ribbon cutting this past weekend. And just wanted to welcome you guys. I'm so excited. The store looks fantastic. Um, why don't you just tell everybody a couple things about what you have here? Wow. What do we have here, Murph? What do you think? We have um, a collection of a little bit of everything. We have uh, everything from T-shirts and sweatshirts to vintage vinyl records. We have food items. Um, we have books. We have games. We have puzzles. A little bit of everything. And I noticed that like it's s you start when you come in. There's a, like a little seasonal corner. Then there's a kitchen corner, and there's some great. I mean, I've already been in, spent a lot, a lot of money already, and so excited to have done that. So. Um, Cinnamon toast, popcorn. Yeah, let's talk about the cinnamon toast, <laughs> how we had to reorder. Uh, Cindy basically ate our entire supply of cinnamon toast popcorn, <laughs> and now we have to reorder the whole. No, I'm just kidding. You only ate one bag. But there's so much here for everybody. So I hope everyone will come out this weekend and check it out. But we're at Murphy's General Store in Harwichport. And like Heather said and Jay said, there's something here from puppets for the children, vinyl records. Yes, vinyl records, children. They do exist. And jewelry, <laughs> sunglasses, sweatshirts, postcards. Just come and join us here in Harwichport and uh, welcome Murphy's General Store here. Thank oh, you. and they are open. Sorry. Um, we're kicking off the full-time hours now. So That's right. This weekend, seven days? Yep, starting Thursday. We'll be open seven days a week. We're opening at 9, um, and soon we'll be staying open until 9 o'clock. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Wednesdays, they're going to have the ice cream truck here for the Port Summer Nights. So we look forward to seeing everyone in Harwich Port and here at Murphy's General Store. Thanks, everybody.
Well, we appreciate um, Diana and Cindy uh, together talking about this new acquisition in Harwichport. I know. But especially meeting Jay and Heather, uh, the new owners uh, of the general store. Boy, uh, Murphy's General Store. Does that ever look wonderful? And we wish them the best of luck in their endeavor. Um, I just can't believe the transition. It's I know. You did a wonderful job, Jay and Heather, and we wish you the best, as yeah, Jack we, said. Yeah, we really yeah. do. Can't Very, wait to go in and Yeah, I can't wait everything. to get down there. <laughs> Very, <laughs> Very good. Very inviting looking. Yes. Okay, what do you have, Eileen? Well, I have a couple of things from the <clears throat> Harwich Recreation Department. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a new program that they're starting this summer. It's called the Pre-Summer Program. Activities for Harwich residents before the official playground program begins July 1st. When is it going to happen, you ask? Well, it's going to happen June 18th to the 21st from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And again, June 24th to June 28th from 9 to 5 p.m. It's going to happen right here at the Harwich Community Center. The cost is only $100 per week. Early drop-off is available at 8.15 for $10 additional per day. Uh, it will include indoor and outdoor rec activities, including field trips, arts and crafts, and athletic games. Limited space is available, so sign up starting now at the Recreation Office. And again, it's for Harwich residents only. That's wonderful. Yeah, that really is. That's, That's really good for working new parents. And that sounds wonderful. Yeah, when the kids get out of school, yeah. it's nice. And then <clears throat> there are the Harwich Recreation Year End programs for grades one through four arts and crafts on Mondays. Uh, May 20th, June 3rd, and June 10th, the cost is $25. Street hockey on Tuesdays, May 21st, May 28th, June 4th, and June 11th, and the cost for that is $30. Indoor soccer on Wednesdays, May 22nd, May 29th, June 5th, and June 12th, $30. Flag football Thursdays, May 23rd and 30th, June 6th and 13th, the cost is $30 and fun Fridays on Fridays. Uh, May 24th, May 31st, June 7th, and June 14th. The cost is $30 for that, and just a little asterisk, uh, June 7th will be held at the Old Middle School. Limited space, again, is available, so sign up starting now, and Harwich residents only. Get in touch with the Harwich Recreation Department if you're interested in any of those. Very good. Great opportunities. Yeah, really, yeah. just wonderful opportunities. Uh, that's great. Well, as you know, this coming Monday, the 27th, is Memorial Day, and we're going to be having a Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, the Town of Harwich Memorial Day uh, ceremony will be held at Brooks Park in Harwich Center at 9.30 a.m. And um, it's going to be a rather, uh, rather nice uh, lineup this mm -hmm. year. Uh, music, of course, by the Harwich Town Band conduct uh, conductor Peter H. Cobb. Opening remarks, Will Remillard, the Pledge of Allegiance by the Harwich Scouts, the National Anthem by the Monomoy Ladies a cappella group. Mm. Now that'll be that'll be yeah, gorgeous, I bet. Beautiful. Yeah, the invocation by Father Mark Tremblay, greetings by Selectman Don Howell, the guest speaker is Sergeant Jeremy Armstrong, benediction by Father Mark Tremblay, taps and closing remarks. And then um, let There Be Peace on Earth is probably the closing uh, number mm -hmm. they're doing. Sounds like a wonderful uh, Memorial Day ceremony. And again, we have to remind everybody that all town buildings are closed on Memorial Day. Folks, that is our show for this week. We really appreciate you joining us. And on behalf of all of us here in Channel 18, have a safe Memorial Day weekend. Yes, and please take advantage of everything going on around town. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Remember.